Our next guest says it's time to look at some of the dividend plays. BMO Capital Markets, Brian Belsky, has an S&P target of 5,100, not too far from where we are, joins us now. So, Brian, we're, we're kind of going back and forth here about whether the economy is accelerating or slowing down and what that's going to mean for the market. What do you think? Well, Sarah, so great to see you, and thanks so much for having us on the show. Uh, BMO has learned, BMO has learned that sometimes... Uh, prices not only go up, uh, sometimes they go down, and oh, by the way, sometimes they go sideways. And I think what's happening, and everyone's missing it once again, is that this is year two of normalization, probably a three to five year process that we started talking about in late 2022, Sarah. We tend to continue to act and react to every macro data point that happened yesterday, and we're still so focused on the Fed. The Fed funds futures have been wrong. Uh, we, for one, have said that uh, we were not in the camp for March. Uh, we, for one, said that, that it, would be, it would not be surprising if the Fed doesn't even cut rates uh, th this year. However, I think what you have to understand is the, the markets are still trying to figure out what normal looks like. And remember, the average 10-year Treasury since 1950 is 5%. So that's clearly higher than what we've seen the last five years. And so that's why I think these reactions are going to continue. And while we're probably not as bullish as you uh, and most people think that we are all the time, I think it's a time for moderation. I think it's a time to own a lot of different types of stocks, not just growth, not just value, not just small, not just uh, large, but also look at yield at a reasonable price, which we wrote about in both the United States and Canada yesterday, and dividend growth, especially those areas is not high yield, but those areas that have cash flow yields above the dividend yield, we think those are great strategies heading into 2024. Am I hearing Brian Belsky be a little less bullish or, or am I making that up? <laughs> No, so. I mean, David, how are you? Nice, nice to see you. No, we, you we are in, our bull case is 5,500. Now, what do we need to get to 5,500? We need to see uh, a massive acceleration of earnings. Our earnings number is 250. To get to, I think, 53 to 5,500, we need $260 of earnings. The same earnings rhetoric, David, is going on right now that happened last year. Everyone's missing that. Earnings revisions have been very good, and, and that company expectations have been very understated. Uh, but let's, given the fact that we ran so hard in November and December again, act and react. We need to normalize here a little bit and understand that this inflation is not going to go away forever. Rates are going to be higher for longer. Those higher for longer rates are actually normal. We haven't seen a normal market environment, my friend, since the late 90s, early 2000s. And so we yeah. have to kind of unwind some of the silliness. What You know what? Actually, you mentioned that a couple of times in terms of normal. So what is a normal market environment then? What does that mean? You said, I think you said the late 90s. That didn't feel normal to me in some ways, Brian. Well, we have said this. We have said this. And again, you and I have been doing this for a long time, talking about this stuff and had long careers. So if you can look at 1983... Madonna borderline. I'm just putting this in a song uh, notion so you can remember. In 1995, Nirvana lithium. What do you do to a borderline personality disorder? You give them lithium. So think about the mid-80s and the mid-90s. 1995 <clears throat> was a year of Goldilocks where the Fed pivoted after the SNL uh, and, and commercial real estate crisis. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the 80s uh, recession, the Fed was cutting and trying to normalize the economy. I think that's where we're going. Oh, by the way, those two periods, the early 80s and the mid-90s, were all about stock picking and not about all this macro stuff and focusing on the Fed so much. I think some of that has to unwind, and I think that's what's going to end up happening in the next couple of years.